New arc, right? New arc? Seems like a real charmer. And curse. Yeah, the guy's a magnet. I feel like some people will just they look for any opportunity, find anyone they can to let out the anger they have in their own lives. What is he complaining about? Building security? A simple text message probably would have sufficed. I wonder if we're even going to get a full arc here. It seems like it's going to end with a cliffhanger because we only got a couple episodes left. There's not a lot of time. Am I right to expect season two set up to some degree? That baseball episode ended up being great. I could have done a whole baseball arc, to be honest. I want to know everyone else's fun facts. Right, right. They picked this up. Is there a trend? Right, right. A specific curse. Stabbed to death. All at the entrance to an apartment. All the management. Interesting. The pain of real estate manifested. Yeah, how do I guess there's precedence, right? The curses can interact with the real world, clearly. There was that Gogo Caesarea incident. Still the most traumatic thing in the show so far. <laughs> okay, so it's not just management. It's not just the anxieties of being a renter or a manager. But why always the door? <laughs> Guy stuck in the middle. This could turn into some real interesting middle school, high school drama. One of the surprises I've had about the show is how quickly it moves. The plot line advances at a kind of a breakneck speed. It's one huge event to the next. I can imagine there being a lot of episodes like this where they're investigating the supernatural. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of potential for some really great kind of mini adventures. It's such a wide and rich world having curses be representative of human misery. There's something sort of mob cycle like about the setup. Hopefully they, they packed ample salt for the occasion. Yeah, there goes their lead. Even without the door, but still the entrance connection. Huh. What, is, what is the connection to their backstory and front doors? We got some punks. Way to be judgmental. You never know in these shows. Sometimes it's the people you never expect that end up being the most wholesome. There's been so much subversion of the jock trope lately in shows I've watched. From Mob Psycho to this, speaking of Mob, don't judge two kids because they're outside of school smoking. I find that insulting. <laughs> On multiple counts. Who are they actually bowing to? Ooh. <laughs> Interesting. I'd love to get more about him as a kid. Damn, he's a legend. Did they now? <laughs> Alright. Wow, she is bold. It's him, he did it. It's a janitor. Is he a janitor? <laughs> I don't know. He beat me to a pulp. <laughs> he did it. It's Mr. Takeda. I had a bad feeling about Takeda. Bet you were. <laughs> well, judging by these other shows, they were gang leaders. That's a lot of worse things they can be doing. Sounds pretty cool and wholesome. Unconscious under the bridge. I see you lurking back there, Takeda. Tsumiki. Oh, that's... That's her, right? He's pretty tight-lipped. These are the wombs, right? This is just guessing, not even from the show itself, but from other anime. It's all speculation, but since the beginning, I've 
felt the sort of Evangelion-like risk to the Jujutsu Sorcerers where, I don't know, they control a lot of power, right? And they could be doing this nominally for defense of the world and innocent people, but there's that famous thing about power and corruption, right? What's to say there aren't people among their ranks who have a bigger goal for themselves that involves using this power? I just get the feeling that the organization as a whole is not necessarily a positive force. They're doing things that are positive for people in the world, yes, but it might turn out that at least for some of them, that's because that can run concurrent with other maybe more selfish goals what in the world is that oh they're gonna they're gonna make a new entity they don't need money I wonder how it'll affect things knowing that he was not a willing participant in this One thing I appreciate about this show that I think separates it from other battle shonen, let's say, is there's sort of like a, a different kind of sleekness to it in terms of just representing life. Something about that nighttime highway. You know, one down, two to go. He looks great. <laughs> He's having a good time. No curse, huh? Is this what we're doing? What? Is it A or B? Stay away from all doors. Just never go into a house again. You live in nature now. Oh no. Why now? Why all of a sudden? Yeah, I mean, I get why they're not telling her, but they better do their part to look after her. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> My thoughts exactly. You hooligan, or punk, or whatever. Oh no! Duh! Wait a minute. Is he hiding the fact that his sister's gone? I was under the impression that she died. This got got way more personal. These two both take turns hiding their emotions from each other, but both of them knowing what's really going on. And yeah, there's so few of them, they're always short staffed. I don't think that's on the table for Goro. They're gonna have his back though. There's no way they're gonna leave him. Gojo being gone is terrifying. No chance. That's a huge fake out. What exactly was she, was she doing? Yeah, the four kids, they woke up under the bridge, right? And there they are. He's been keeping everyone at arm's length for a really long time. That's what it is. <laughs> totally on board. In the best way. It's gotta feel great. You only got one shot, one opportunity. <laughs> Will you capture it or let it slip? They got in. Oh, it's Diglett! <laughs> there it is, indeed. Yeah, we found it. Are you sure this is the curse? Oh, and the, the other curse shows up. The womb curse. You're looking great. They're like just sending curses out to the kids now. 
Two at once. I'm gonna black flash the thing into oblivion. Oh no, is that it? Set up for the battle. Some interesting backstory for Guru. Having been a punk or a bully, there's something cool about that when connecting it to his idea of wanting to do good. The feeling I get is that he was really isolated, maybe didn't know how to make connections. He's a really interesting character because it really does feel like he found some semblance of goodness the hard way. You know what I mean? Maybe through a lot of regret. And it definitely feels like there's there's guilt he carries about either what he's done or the way he's perceived life in the past that gives him the sort of humble goodness. The dark side of which is that it feels like a sort of penance and there's a feeling of undeservedness in it, which makes the response of his two friends backing him up like that feel really good because they know the deal. I mean, they all know each other. They're all doing this thing of trying to carry their burden on their own, but I guess since they're all doing it, they can all see it. Guru's played that role for Yuji as well, you know, pick it up on the fact that he wasn't okay when he was saying he's okay. Yuji returning the favor here. And I know the feeling it can be tough to ask for help. So the fact that they showed up and wouldn't take no for an answer has got to feel great. And in fact, I think one of the things that makes this so great, even though this was in some ways a low-key episode and was set up for this mystery, is that their friendship has been there, but they haven't had a lot of time to like be together as a crew. It's just been one epic thing after another. This feels like development for the three of them as as friends and students. Juju Sampo. I was sort of hoping it would be another choice episode with Panda. Speaking of adventures, student adventures, mini stories. Nothing paranormal about this, I guess. Just choking dudes out. Well, we get a whole story in the Juju Sampo. Oh no! The flavor of life that she's been carrying on is all for nothing. And then food trivia. That Juju Sampo did it all, huh? It's funny because I was just saying that I imagine if there was more time, there would be a lot of these mini adventures. You know, they're working kids. I don't mean to compare the show to My Hero Academia so much. It's just the fact that there are so many parallels with them being students slash workers simultaneously. But if it was as long running or planned to be as long running as My Hero Academia, I, I would imagine there would be a lot of things like in My Hero Academia where they do the, the internships and the work studies and do patrols and things like that. And honestly, while I appreciate the fact that the stakes are always ramping up and the arcs usually seem big, because the characters were cool, I feel like it would work. It would be fun to see in the show as well.